it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Love Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to talk all about eating your colors. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. A few weeks ago in my video on five tips to get and stay in shape, one of my tips included eating your colors. So this video is just going to be a more in-depth explanation of that. We're going to go down all of the colors. I'm going to share with you the different nutrients and vitamins and minerals that are in each one because each color is super important. Every food is full of photonutrients. These are nutrients that are really correlated and tied to the different pigments that are in these fruits and vegetables. So as they grow and they're absorbing light, they're absorbing nutrients from the ground, it's creating these different compounds that are more found in one color than the other, which is why it's super important to have a bunch of different colors on your plate, getting a bunch of colors in throughout the day. To go down the colors, we're going to start with our good old friend that we all remember and love. Roy G. Biv. So Roy over here, we're starting off with R for red. When you think of red foods, you need to think of powerful antioxidants. Even these like pinkishy fruits and veggies are still in the red category and they're all very delicious. Strawberries are my favorite fruit. Like I said, red foods are big in antioxidants, one of them being lycopene. So it's really good for protecting cells from damage. Another one is elagic acid, which is an antioxidant and it also has anti-mutagenic and anti-cancer properties. When you hear anti-mutagenic, that's basically like when your cells duplicate, which they're doing all the time, it's how you get new brain cells, new skin cells. Some Sometimes in the duplication process, little mutations are going to happen in your DNA and often it's like absolutely nothing. But when those are bigger mutations and they start multiplying a lot, that's very often when those mutations and those cells will start turning into cancers and will start kind of taking over and creating these masks. So having anti-mutagenic properties is really important for making sure that your cells are duplicating and they're duplicating healthy. Another compound that red foods have a lot of, and especially purple foods because they're basically like a darker red, but I'll get to those at the very end because we're going down the color spectrum, but it's quercetin, which is probably something that you've heard a lot more of in the last couple of years. I've definitely spoken about it, and it's also really good to help protect against heart disease and cancer. It has anti-inflammatory properties, and it has an antihistamine effect because it can help stabilize the cells that release histamines. It also has hesperidin, which I will get more to with orange foods, vitamin A, which is important for vision, growth, cell division, reproduction, in immunity and then it also has vitamin C which is an antioxidant that helps protect your cells against the effect of free radicals which is really good for your immune system as well as your skin with all of these things together the benefits of red foods is helping reduce the risk of different cancers protecting the body against harmful free radicals by being an antioxidant and protecting your body against heart disease as well as lowering blood pressure LDL cholesterol and just supporting your body and your joint tissue and your muscle growth as these cells are duplicating. Next up, orange foods. So of course when you think of orange, you think vitamin C and as I just mentioned, really good for boosting your immune system, for your brain health, for your skin. Having a lot of vitamin C, just like those citrusy fruits, are really good since it does have antioxidant effects. By getting rid of those free radicals, it does clear up your skin, it just helps you detox, clears up all the gunk in your brain. Another thing that you think of right away when it comes to orange foods is the beta carotene, which if your mom was always like mine, was like, make sure you eat your carrots because they're good for your eyes. Well, beta carotene and carrot, those are similar because beta carotene is basically the pigment that gives orange foods the orange color. Once in your body, the beta carotene will convert into vitamin A and is really beneficial for good vision and eye health, so I guess our moms were right, as well as a strong immune system, healthy skin, and healthy mucous membranes. And as I mentioned, I would get into hesperidin, basically a flavonoid that's highly concentrated in citrus fruits, which has been shown to decrease blood pressure. Orange foods are also super high in zeaxanthin. It is a bit more towards the yellow end of the spectrum. It's a yellow colored pigment, so it's a lot in yellow foods as well as oranges and green foods. And it's super good for eye health. It also has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits, and that all reduces your risk of eye disease. And it does so by protecting your eyes by absorbing the harmful blue light that we all stare into a lot of the time in our modern lives. Lycopene is one that I mentioned with red. 
red because it's a photonutrient that's often associated to the red pigments, but it is also found in orange foods. And then potassium is super high in orange foods as well. And its main role in the body is to maintain normal fluid levels inside our cells, which is basically the opposite of sodium, which is another electrolyte that we need that maintains healthy fluid levels outside of our cells. So by having both, that allows for all of these chemical processes and for things to move between the membranes and to get over here and to bring all of its nutrients and energy into one side and to do all of the human body stuff you need both potassium and sodium those two really essential electrolytes potassium also works really closely with calcium and magnesium which is essential for building healthy bones overall all of the photonutrients in orange foods are really important for your eye health also reduces the risk of prostate cancer will lower your blood pressure and ldl cholesterol and also promotes healthy joints collagen formation also fight to free radicals in the body and boost your immune system. Yellow, I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet because there is a lot of overlap with orange foods, especially because of the zeaxanthin, which is a photonutrient that's highly concentrated with the yellow pigment. So again, it's a little bit in the oranges, a lot in the yellows, and then also in the greens. A good source of vitamins and antioxidants, especially vitamin A. And because of those high levels of zeaxanthin and vitamin A, yellow foods are also really good for your heart health and eye health. And now let's jump into green, especially your dark leafy greens are so full of nutrients are so good for you the darker it is it means like the more photonutrients are in there it means more of everything i'm about to say is in there too so dark leafy greens gotta love them arugula is my favorite so green foods are super high in folate which is vitamin b9 and is super important in red blood cell formation and for healthy cell growth and function it's especially important if you're pregnant green foods are also full of potassium which again is an essential electrolyte that we need especially to balance out sodium as well as vitamin a really important for vision growth cell division reproduction immunity antioxidant properties as well as vitamin c antioxidant properties fighting against free radicals. Vitamin E, which is also really important for vision, reproduction, blood health, brain health, skin health, antioxidants. Vitamin K, which is a group of fat soluble vitamins. So you need to eat some fats with them, but they are super important in blood clotting, bone metabolism, and regulating blood calcium levels. And I know like bone metabolism sounds weird, but your body uses osteoblasts and osteoclasts to break down and rebuild your bone all the time so your bones are growing until your like highest bone density is around like age 30 on average is kind of when you peak in bone density because the amount of bone that's growing out paces the amount of bone that's being broken down so you are still gaining bone mass and then afterwards mainly because of just like age and if you aren't working out as much like you will also have higher bone density and build more bone if you're doing weight bearing exercise such as weight lifting or even running because that is putting weight on your body as you run or as you walk more so than swimming or biking would because you're not really putting weight on that so by doing that definitely increases the amount of bone density that you are building up, which is super important. And afterwards, when your bone density slowly starts to go down because your body is breaking down more bone than it is building, that's often when as you get older and you just become very frail, it becomes harder to repair bones and it becomes harder to, they just do become weaker. So having good vitamin K and having also just again, good calcium levels is really important for building bones and making sure that your bones do stay strong since they're constantly being rebuilt. Other phytonutrients in green produce are isothiocyanates, which is a precursor in cruciferous vegetables, which I love my cruciferous vegetables. And those also help get estrogen and hormones and everything else out of your body by binding to these extra hormones. And it will reduce the activation of carcinogens in your body and just increase detox Green fruits and veggies also have lutein, which is really good for your eye health. It's also anti-inflammatory, and they also have zeaxanthin, which as I mentioned, is really good for eye health as well. You very often do hear them together because they both are powerful antioxidants and are really good for your brain function as well. Since they're antioxidants, they're helping get rid of those free radicals, especially those in your brain that are damaging your brain cells, and in the end can contribute to age-related diseases like heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, 
and Alzheimer's disease. So having enough lutein and zeaxanthin together, which again, you very often hear them in a combined setting, is really good from clearing out all of that oxidative damage and all that junk in your brain so you can have just more brain function and healthier body in the long run. Green fruits and veggies also have isoflavones, which have antioxidant, anti-cancer, anti-microbial, and anti-inflammatory properties. It's also super high in the polyphenol EGCG, which is a powerful compound that may benefit health by reducing inflammation, aiding in weight loss, and preventing certain chronic diseases. And it's really high in green tea, part of that caffeine, and it's just really good for your brain and heart health. So overall, green foods just have a plethora of benefits from reducing heart disease risk, reducing diabetes and cancer risk, reducing high blood pressure. Spinach is really good for all of that. Again, getting in your cruciferous veggies like cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, so many good things with the greens. Next up with RG Biv is Biv, so blue, indigo, violet, but when it comes to food, it's all purple. And a lot of these do have the same compounds and effects as red foods because it's essentially just a really dark red. And again, the darker the pigment means the more phytonutrients it has in there. But starting off with lutein and zeaxanthin, again, super high in purple foods. Purple foods also has resveratrol, which has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. And being anti-inflammatory, it's really good for reducing arthritis, reducing skin inflammation. It can also help protect against diseases such as cancer, diabetes and Alzheimer's. Purple foods also have vitamin C which is just still very good for you as well as flavonoids which have beneficial anti-inflammatory effects and also help protect against oxidative damage. Purple foods also have oligic acid which have powerful antioxidant, anti-mutagenic and anti-cancer properties as well as quercetin which again is also an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, can help reduce any swelling, control blood sugar, prevent heart disease. It's also commonly used for supporting your heart and your blood vessels as well as reducing arthritis. Altogether, they are really good for helping fight inflammation, improving your body's ability to absorb calcium, also just lower that bad LDL cholesterol, support your eye health, boost your immune system, support healthy digestion, and are really good as anti-carcinogens, which is important for getting those toxins out of your body. And last but not least, white or like the white tan brownish kind of category, which often when you're thinking of eating your colors, you don't think like, oh yeah, I gotta get all my white foods in. But it includes like bananas because technically they look yellow on the outside, which is where there are all of those different nutrients. But on the inside, the flesh is white. And as well as dates, mushrooms, white onion. So there are a bunch of different white foods. Parsnips are also white. So all these like white tannish brown foods still do fit into the rainbow. Phytonutrients found in white food include beta-glucans, which can reduce cardiovascular disease. They also have antimicrobial and anti-cancer and anti-diabetic properties, as well as the ability to control your cholesterol levels. They also have EGCG, which again reduces inflammation by fighting free radicals, promotes heart health by reducing high blood pressure and high bad cholesterol. And it's also really good for brain health by preventing degenerative brain diseases. White foods also have SDG lingans, which can protect against cardiovascular disease and other metabolic diseases by reducing lipid and glucose concentrations, lowering blood pressure, and decreasing oxidative stress and inflammation. And a lot of the nutrients in white foods are also really good at helping balance hormones, which can in turn reduce your cancer risk by making sure that your body is functioning properly. And lastly, I would be remiss not to mention that all of these foods, no matter what color you are pulling your foods from, all of these fruits and veggies, since they are whole, not overly processed junk foods, are full of fiber. And I mention it all the time, but we need 25 grams of fiber per day to have just healthy digestive system, feel satiated, just feel good and having our bodies like work properly and getting things moved around and getting things out, getting all those toxins actually out of our body. We need fiber very often. Us Americans in our modern lives just get eight grams a day. Again, we need 25 grams a day. They all have fiber, so being sure to focus on these whole foods is really good for getting that fiber up. Well, there you have it. Those are all the different phytonutrients and their benefits when you eat your 
colors. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what your favorite color to eat is and what else you want to see here on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.